everyone. My name is Sarah Nuno Villa. I'm representing Oakland Unified. I work outside of the Office of Equity as our Family Community Engagement Specialist. And we are so honored to be here this morning with you and to actually share um, a high level overview of our work. Um, so before we get started, um, I want to just kind of build off um, of the energy that Laura brought into the space um, from Bakersfield and just start with love. Uh, we do this work um, because we love it. We love our city. We love our students. We love our families. We love ourselves in the city and the work. And so we're going to kick it off with a song. Um, and we dedicate it to you, to Oakland, to all of our students and families um, who we're supporting. So with that, I'm going to share my screen. I think I can now. They say love is the answer. They say love is the way. Missing the world, I hope I see you again someday. In isolation, trying to find the right words to say. To the rest of the world, from Oakland to the rest of the world, I love you. They say love is the way Missing the world I hope I see you again someday In isolation Trying to find the right words to say
All right, so we just, this is just um, an introduction of our team. We're not all here today, um, but some of us are. And so I wanted to give just folks an, a chance to introduce themselves and just share something that they love about our city. Um, and when we're done, I just want to invite you all to share in the chat what's something that you love about your city and the school district that you work for um, as we're kind of sharing um, to be inclusive and to have you participate a little bit. Um, and so I'm going to pass it to Jamie to introduce herself next. Welcome, everyone. I'm Jamie Lolly. I'm a community school manager here in the amazing city of Oakland. And I actually was born in Oakland. I was raised in a neighboring city. But um, strangely enough, this would have been the school I'm going and sitting in right now would have been my neighborhood school. My parents, when they got married, just lived just around the corner. My aunt lived just around the street. So I feel like a really, really deep connection to this space in the city. But I um, fell, I don't want to say I fell into education and like it grabbed me and held me like because it continues to teach me. So as much as I feel like I'm in this space of education and we're in, you know, sharing knowledge with parents and we're, we're informing parents, I feel like they teach me more. I feel like I've learned so much. It's grown me up and created empathy in me, but um, it just educates me daily. And that is why I love the city of Oakland. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. My name is Jerome Gordon. Currently, I'm Director of Targeted Strategies for Student Achievement for Oakland Unified School District. The irony of me and Ms. Lolly is the school that she sits in right now is basically where I started my uh, teaching career when I moved from Los Angeles area to the Bay and was there for 20 years as a teacher, uh, assistant principal, and then principal uh, before uh, being asked by superintendent to move into uh, uh, central office. And really proud that our school was one of the first schools with the school uh, community uh, school whole whole child community school effort to have a, a school based help center uh, based of, around that theme and just love Oakland will be here uh, have been here now 25 years plan to retire from here and uh, you know the unapologeticness of Oakland with this diversity is just a, a extremely special place so I'm honored to uh, be in your presence today. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Jason Arenas. Um, I'm a partner with uh, the Oakland team from the Alameda County Office of Education. I uh, spent nine years uh, cutting my teeth and getting introduced to the Bay Area in Oakland. I'm originally from Los Angeles. I live and raise my daughter uh, in Oakland, and my wife works in Oakland. Um, you know, really, Oakland has taught me uh, the importance of just loving yourself, your culture, um, and the ingenuity and kind of resistance to, uh, you know, the, the dominant culture that sometimes doesn't allow us as Black, Indigenous, and people of color to show our greatness um, and to be our fullest, uh, best selves. So I've really learned a lot as an individual and as a community member and really blessed to be part of this team. Thank you. We have one more person um, to introduce. Um, Michael, I'm going to pass it to you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael DeSosa. I'm the Chief Program Officer at the Oakland Reach, which is a parent advocacy group, and just blessed to do this partnership with OUSD. Um, what I love about Oakland is its deep commitment to criticality. And what I mean by that is believing that the world that is does not have to exist anymore, and we can create one that's more just and more whole for all of our babies. Um, and so that's what the Oakland Reach is all about, how to, how to fight for um, the families who have historically been denied access to quality schooling and, and opportunity and economics. And so super juiced to be with you all and love my city. I got two babies in Oakland Public Schools. I got Rosa in fourth grade and Joseph Anthony in kindergarten. Thank you so much, Michael. And um, just for myself, I was raised in Oakland. Oakland raised me which is one thing that I love about being from Oakland is just the spirit of social justice, um, which aligns with all of my values. Um, so I just feel a deep connection to my city, um, to the place that raised me and shaped me to be who I am today. And I feel very proud of that fact. And I feel very honored to be here with you all today. Um, I too have children who went through our OUSD system and I have a five-year-old about to uh, enter kindergarten. So I'm in it, got some skin in the game. We all have some skin in the game as parents and as folks just from the community. So just wanted to name that um, as we continue on. 
So we're just going to start with sharing OUSD's vision, mission, and our graduate profile along with our values. And one thing um, that I just want to kind of name about our vision is that we start off by talking about how students will find joy in their academic experience. Um, so just wanting to, to share our vision, um, focus that we really want students to love learning. Um, we are a full service community school district and have been for about the last 10 years. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so just wanting to share our vision, our mission and our values. I'm kind of guiding the work in Oakland. Um, we are not going to go through all of these fast facts, but I'm sharing just some fast facts about our school district for folks who may wanna go back to this slide and learn a bit more about our school district. Um, one thing that I would like to note is that we do serve 71%, um, almost 72% free reduced lunch. So that's something that I wanted to just kind of name on this slide, but to go a little bit deeper, um, just wanted to share who we serve, right? So this is OUSD's enrollment by ethnicity. So you can see um, right now, Latinos kind of are our largest group um, in Oakland Unified, but we do have growing populations that we hadn't had before. Um, an example of that um, would be our mom speaking uh, population. So we'll talk about that in a little bit, but just wanted to give you an idea of the makeup of our school district and who we're serving. This is just the languages that exist in Oakland Unified, which is pretty amazing. It's a little daunting when you look at this, but I just wanted to know that um, currently our top languages in um, OUSD are Spanish, still at uh, 32, almost 33%, followed by Cantonese um, of almost 4%. Mom is a new um, language that is really um, exploding in Oakland Unified and we're really trying to figure out how to um, communicate in mom and build um, our, our capacity to work with the mom speaking community. So they're at almost 4% now in Oakland Unified followed by our Arabic speaking um, population at almost two and a half percent and then our Vietnamese speakers. So those are our top languages um, that we serve. We actually have interpreters for all of those languages, um, which we're really proud of. And we hired on a mom interpreter this year, which was very exciting. So it just gives you an idea of the diversity in Oakland. I'm gonna pass it to Jamie. We really wanna start off with talking about how we're a full service community school district because that's really been at the foundation of our student and family engagement work. Jamie is a community school manager and really as one of the first people and has one of the first schools who's really embraced this concept of being a community school district. So with that, I'm gonna pass it to Jamie to kind of kick us off with that with that community school information. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I'm happy to be here with everyone today just to talk a little bit about like who we are as Oakland Unified. We are a full service community school district and it's really our approach to providing an equitable education experience for all of our families. And the one of the previous slides, Sarah talked about the numbers of um, students we serve that um, receive free and reduced lunch. That's upwards of 70%. We talked about the diversity and language. Jason and the chat that, um, gave a bit of a, a primer on like the mom language and where these families are coming from. And they, they mostly represent um, our newcomer population. And so with all of those, those that diversity, a lot of inequity has unfortunately happened for our families. And so by being a full service community school district, we're committed to making sure that all of our students are receiving um, the same um, experience with quality schools. So our tagline is community schools thriving students and full service community schools is our effort in doing so. Um, if you look at the, the highlights over the inception, you'll see this is um, a decade long um, initiative that started with five community school managers. I was one of the first. You can see some of the funding attached to it, but you can see that we've gone deeper and committed um, more funds and more resources, both persons and staffing to the fact that we now have um, upwards of 40 community school managers in a district that's about the size of 80. So if we could move on. And I wanna name that being a full service community school district is our effort of not just, oh, it's a great way to run a school. We feel it's an amazing way to run a district because we're supporting every aspect of our community. Um, just stopping on the slide for a second, if you want to kind of read about um, how this started, 
where it's going. Um, we partnered with the Gardner Center at Stanford um, to talk about this journey. And so this is the book called The Way We Do School. All right, so community school managers, these are my colleagues, my peers, I love them. Um, and they, this is not all of us, but we are at about half of the school sites in Oakland. So key to the work of community school managers in Oakland, it really is about making those connections, that engagement. So if you see at the, the visual, like we support engagement with our school community, the community at large and our families and families would include our students, um, our parents, our guardians, that we really are engaging each pieces of this wheel, as it were, this diagram, so that they understand how they intersect. We engage with the community and the families to find out what their needs are. And then our job is to make sure that we are bringing the community in or allowing families to know what services exist in the community to, to meet their needs. And so engagement is that piece and it's, it's relationship work. So you'll see it in a very one-to-one -one level conversations with families all the way up to the systems level for how we support all of our families um, with various programs that we may have at the school site. So we want to lift up that we aim to sit in strong relationship with our families and, and every aspect of our school community. And that is key to our work. And so this role does that. We're also blessed to have a family liaison, but that is less typical to find. So when you have it, um, you just know that they're really, really a blessing. All right. So we are Frick United Academy of Language, proudly. Um, if you want to learn more about our school, that's a video that can be watched at a later time. But um, one of our beliefs is that engagement is um, everyone's work. And so everyone has to hold this work um, at the school site, but some folks hold it more deeply. And so we have advisors, community school managers, family liaison, guidance counselor, and partners here at our site that really um, spearhead this work. And so I want to name that um, and name why it's so important for us. So an important thing to know is Frick United is a school that opened during COVID. So we engaged in a school merger process um, last year. And so please note that we're doing all of this work and our students literally started attending a brand new school. Like Frick has been a school for multiple years, but we merged schools and that took a lot of work and a lot of trust from families to do so. So I want to name that and lift that up because that is a very um, particular experience that um, most schools haven't had to um, have to engage in. So I want to name that so you just get a little context about who and what we are. So we want to nurture a meaningful engagement. But for us, it's all about relationships and those are, are relationships being authentic. Um, this is, I like to call it, it's people work. It's people work. And that is how we um, support all of our families. We have to be um, entrusting relationships with them. And we have some core practices and structures. I see my time limit warning. So I'm going to move quickly through these slides. So we're going to talk about four. And then I think I'll lift up just two of them a little more strongly. So advisory, affinity groups family question and answer series, and home visits. So every aspect of our school community needs to feel a connection and engagement. And advisory is a great way we do that to both our families and our students. So we, it's a weekly class structure that is stable throughout the year. It is the one class that they have every week um, for a full full class time. It's not a 20 minute block. It's not a 15 minute block. And key to making that space valuable and engaging is the advisor. So they're the first point of contact of engagement and problem solving for families. And it supports a feedback loop to the school at large, myself, the principal, our guidance counselor. We have a weekly tracker and anytime a teacher can put in a note, like we'll see um, an alert. So we're able to really track how our students are doing. They also have an SEL focused curriculum um, that's embedded into it advisory. So affinity groups um, are really important. It's also a practice we see in our district just to allow space for targeted conversations to happen in a safe space. And it's really important that students feel a sense of belonging. And you'll see a couple of the affinity groups at the school listed, but they are really responsive to what the school needs are. I do want to name that. So I have groups in and around African and male achievement, Latino men and boys, and some groups are focused on our newcomers or um, gender specific or, or for our students who identify. LGBTQ plus. 
So one of the things we realized this year, we were navigating families through well, a pandemic and information sharing and communication became hyper important. And so what we realized is that we were asking families to understand, process, and navigate things almost um, as quickly as we were. And so we decided, how do we get this information to families? How do we give them a space to ask questions? How do they give them a space to offer us feedback? And so we created a family question and answer series. And so initially, we tried to pivot, and I think this was mentioned in a previous um, the previous presentation from Bakersfield, like, oh, you know, we were trying to mimic what we would do in person on Zoom, and it's just far too long. So we learned the importance of, of being in shared conversation spaces with our families, and this parent Q&A allowed us to do so. So we, it's less about the content is what I'm referring to here, but the, the structure. So something super short, no more than like a 10 minute presentation um, and allowing a ton of space for parents to ask questions to. We stay the whole time. So sometimes we end up giving our presentation multiple times during the time frame to allow families to ask whatever question they have need for and allows us for to have follow-up. But having that open space less structured um, and just being a conversation is very common to black and brown communities. So families feel safe to communicate there and ask their questions because it doesn't seem so formulaic. So that's been a success. And I'm gonna close out with um, something I'm really proud of, which is our home visits on the next slide. So we really knew that starting a new school during COVID, having relationships with families that felt very trusting was key. And also it would be really challenging to do so because of our, of our circumstances and with being a distance learning. So home visits were a norm to practice prior to COVID and they continue to be a practice during COVID. So we use that space to be and build intentional relationships with families, but they were doorstep visits. So they were shorter, they weren't in the home, they were on the porch. Um, we went in twos, we focused on safety. And while the space could have seemed really, really um, transactional, do you have a Chromebook? Do you need a hotspot? Do you need food delivery? Um, we use that as a space to, um, to really leverage a conversation. So we wanted the space, we wanted to be able to make sure that families had a opportunity to engage with families or to engage with school staff. So what we did, while the, the reason may have been about a Chromebook, we left open-ended questions with each family. How are you doing? Do you need anything? Do you have questions about anything? Can I show you how to do this? Do you need any other supports? And so we took um, a need something that could be very programmatic, check something off. Like it's a Chromebook, it's food delivery, but we use it as a conversation starter, a conversation space. And we've been able to do um, more than 600 throughout the 2021 school year. So that clearly that's this year, that's during COVID. And we found that to be a really successful tool for um, maintaining engagement with our community. I'm gonna pass it back to Sarah at this point. Thank you so much for sharing, Jamie. We thought we it'd be strong to start off with some site-based examples with Frick, who's our partner in this work. And so I really appreciate you sharing all of that, Jamie. Um, I'm gonna just cover a little bit of how the Office of Equity supports um, types of activities that are happening at Frick, but also at other schools in Oakland. Um, and really just focusing um, on highlighting our targeted initiatives to support literacy, attendance, A through G completion, family partnership and youth leadership. Um, and we do that um, through some of these programs. You see these acronyms here. So AAFE is African-American Female Excellence. AAMA is African American Male Achievement, APISA is Asian Pacific Islander Student Achievement, and we end with Latino Student Achievement. So in Oakland, we have a unique department that's allowed to focus in on um, groups that have been historically marginalized, right, or systematically marginalized. So we're going to talk just a little bit about that. Um, here are some of our department goals kind of in a nutshell that I wanted to share with you, but I'm going to go into depth in this next slide of kind of drawing that through line through what are we offering and then how does that impact sites, right? Um, oh, this does not look nice. So let me read off my other computer. I'm sorry, guys, we've got some formatting issues. What I wanted to highlight in terms of district-wide strategies for building authentic relationships is really talking about how through our targeted strategies, we're able to set up space 
with um, subgroups of students who historically haven't had that time or space to process what they're learning, to have conversation about what their experiences have been like, we found that to be tremendously successful. Um, we started with African-American male achievement and that um, gave birth to the other targeted initiatives and also to the Office of Equity. And over the years, over 10 years, we've seen that students, um, African-American males who participate in this program, we see higher literacy outcomes, we see higher attendance outcomes. So we know that these strategies work. And so we're really excited to be able to open up space and open up programming to more students um, uh, in OUSD and to help build staff capacity to hold space with young people and to become more cult culturally competent um, and have uh, our curriculum and um, what we're engaging students with reflect more of what their realities and experiences are like. Um, in terms of family partnership, we um, started a new role this year called the Equity Family Navigator. We have about 83 schools in Oakland Unified and every school named someone to, to take on this role. So it's not a position necessarily, it's a role. And a lot of folks who are taking on this role are in a position where in some, in some way they're touching students and families. And that this new role and folks who've kind of stepped up to take on this extra responsibility during the pandemic has actually proven to be a really great practice that we'd actually want to continue. I heard um, Bakersfield and other school districts talk about how the district funded um, for a family parent liaison position at every school. This is something I'm really excited about. We want that in Oakland um, to kind of build out how we're supporting families and the staff that work with them. So I just wanted to name that as a new strategy for us this year. But we do have kind of a core program called Parents Raising the Bar, um, where we focus on um, behavior, meaning school culture and climate. Um, is there a culture of family engagement at the school? What's the culture like among the staff? How do students feel? Is everyone feeling welcomed and safe to learn? Um, attendance is a huge piece, wanting to make sure that our students are coming to school regularly, um, and if they aren't, us really understanding what some of the challenges might be happening either at school or outside of school. And reading, literacy is a big focus for us in OUSD right now. We are laser focused on reading. I'm going to pass it to Michael in just a moment where he'll talk about um, a new partnership we're in with the Open Reach to improve reading at six of our elementary schools. And so I just kind of wanted to share some of those practices and kind of round out the family piece with we also have um, a, a rigorous district level advisory um, engagement structure. So similar to other school districts, we have an, an LCAP parent student advisory committee and that, that committee has subcommittees. So an English language learner committee, a special ed committee, a foster youth committee, and more recently, um, a committee uh, to empower excellence in Black students' education. And that one is brand new for us, about a year old. So we're working on creating um, affinity spaces and spaces at site and district level for parents to engage, to help make decisions, um, to help share with us what the realities are for them on the ground, right? Part of what we're also doing as the Office of Equity or part of what our charge is, is to increase um, equity SCL mindset across the system. So to partner with different departments, kind of build their capacity to serve students, to serve families, and to build their staff's capacity to do this work with an equity mindset, um, with a focus on meaningful student engagement, family partnership and our, our targeted um, initiatives, right? So that's, that's something that our department has been tasked with. Um, we're doing a bunch of great work with families. We're doing great work at the site, but we continue to experience challenges, right? And so we just wanted to name um, three challenges that we're continuing to experience. And one is just literacy across the board, right? Um, we've joined this, this cohort because we want to really figure out how to do a better job of serving our Black students and our mom-speaking students specifically. And so we're kind of focusing in on those two areas. Um, and so what we're understanding is that we know the challenge is great for our mom speakers because they're, we didn't have the capacity as a district to even communicate. And so now we've got a translator, we have a couple partner organizations, parents are getting more information in their native language and we're really, we're trying to build that muscle right to serve. Um, and understand that it's really hard to learn how to read in English when you're learning to read maybe in Spanish first and then English. And so it's like your third language, right? Um, so just kind of acknowledging that struggle. 
Um, attendance still tends to be an issue for a lot of our families for multiple reasons, issues happening at school, issues happening outside of school, um, and suspension. Um, we have recently been called out for disproportionately suspending, in particular, um, Black male students, right? And so this is an issue that Oakland's had in the past. We, can, we continue to struggle. Um, with implicit bias, um, with racist practice that don't work for our young people. And so um, this is something else that we're kind of honing in on and, and dealing with as a challenge, right? Um, and so given these challenges, right, what we understand is that we have to um, really address the entire ecosystem and serve our families while we're doing that, right? And one of the ways we've done that is by establishing a racial justice, equity, and healing task force to specifically take on this work um, at a district level. So basically, we call it healing the fish, right, while we're treating the ecosystem, right? And part of the ways we heal the fish is by implementing the programs that I had mentioned, by continuing to be a community school district. Um, we have very robust multi-tier system of support, the MTSS um, at our school sites. We have strong health and wellness initiatives and programs. We implement um, a positive behavior intervention system across the district and we do practice restorative justice. And that's kind of woven through our programs in the district. We're very focused on social emotional learning um, with youth and family partnerships. So really looking at staff modeling, what that looks like, right? Um, and just kind of continuing to have, you know, build professional development, have spaces where we talk about um, having an equity mindset. Um, I'll share with you some foundational trainings, um, a list that we have. Um, and then just in the purple squares, these are some big initiatives that are kind of driving um, where we're headed as a department, as an office of equity. Um, so one of them is the George Floyd safety plan. Um, there were issues with having police in our um, high schools and some of our middle schools and this feeling of students and families um, feeling policed because we had Oakland police on our campuses. So a community pushed back on that and won and we no longer have police on our campuses and we are reimagining our school security officer position um, to have it be more restorative. And so that's just an example of uh, one of the initiatives that we're working on um, to treat to treat the e ecosystem, right, as we're healing the fish within our students and families and staff, right? This is just a list of some of the ways we provide professional development for different topics related to um, racism. We know that racism is one of the root issues in our, in our educational system, um, in our institutions. And so we're really starting to unpack that and, and understand what that means and how that shows up for all of us. All of us have been impacted by it somehow. Um, and so this is just a, a, a list of a series that we have for foundational trainings for our staff. And I'm just sharing our org chart for this is just for the Office of Equity. I'm not going to go through it, but I wanted to just share how we're organized. So you'll see titles here and that type of thing. And if you have questions about this, feel free to follow up with me. Um, I'm actually going to pass it quickly to Michael. I'm not sure how much more time we have. Um, three minutes. Oh, no. So quickly, um, he's going to talk about the hub partnership, which is really exciting for me because we're starting to reimagine what it looks like um, to, for us to have a family parent liaison position um, institutionalized in our system using some of these strategies. So with that, I'm just going to quickly pass it to Michael. Me being short-winded is very challenging. I'll do my best. I see Jamie's face. Um, we believe at the Oakland Reach, one of the ways to disrupt the history of uh, kind of racist schooling is by putting families in positions of power, right? So for that, that means we're going to put, we're going to invest lots of time and energy and, and effort in, in giving every family the tools to become their own like leaders, right? And to, to start thinking about like what they really want. Well, our our co-founder Keisha says, we want our families to feel hella bougie. We want them to feel like they deserve to have great things and talk to, the, to their school about how they're going to get those great things. And so we provided a virtual community uh, that gave case managers to families that had weekly meetings with hundreds of families showing up, like high-end tech support so they can pick up the phone. Um, and get the support they need, but also like set aspirational goals for technology. We gave kids all these extracurricular activities thanks to community partnerships with folks in the community. And we made sure that kids had really um, high quality literacy instruction and families are really excited. They're excited to like kind of be the educational leaders that their kids need. And if we think about the, when I'd say the criticality of Oakland, if we recognize that schools started from 
Native American boarding schools. If we recognize that Brown versus Board led to black, black teachers and black principals not being hired at integrated schools. And then we look at our fact that our schools are resegregated again. This is all because schools have been done to black and brown families. And what we're committed to doing is making sure that families are now co-designers, co-leaders of their children's education. So big shout out to OUSD for doing this work to position families as partners um, and leaders in their child's education. And we're super excited about what we can do with these hubs um, by really fighting to figure out how to reposition families as leaders. Thank you so much, Michael. I realize that we're out of time, but I want to just really acknowledge, acknowledge um, Jason Arenas and all the support that the county has extended, um, not just Oakland Unified, but all of the school districts within Alameda County to do this um, bold and courageous work of really identifying race as an underlying um, issue and giving us tools um, to have conversations with our school districts about that and how to shape the work around that. So Jason, can we just close out quickly? You don't have to go through all your slides, but I just want you to say a couple words before we finish out. Yeah, most definitely. Um, like I said at the beginning, just really honored to be part of this work with the Oakland team. And the biggest thing that I would like to share is that Oakland has taken steps before a lot of what you all are seeing now. So it has been this sustained focus around how to really align the system to the needs of students and families um, in Oakland. And that's the one thing that I personally have learned. Um, and Oakland has always been really um, engaged in kind of wanting to unpack how do we build the capacity of educators and families to have these conversations around the intersection of race, of social political issues, of education, of power, of privilege, and not from a shame and blame, but let's just understand, better understand one another so we can support um, our young people and our families for, for really a better future. Um, and to really, um, you know, just step into to the greatness that we all have to offer. So I've learned a lot from the Oakland team. Um, they've been really monumental in kind of how we've designed our supports at the county. So I just really want to applaud um, all the folks on, on the call and um, just look forward to continue working with them. So I just wanted to close us out and thank you all for, for listening and for, um, for engaging in the chat. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.